Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. We just want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do thank God that you showed up. Listen, I'm so excited to have all of our first timers that are here today. If this is your very first time logging in, just checking us out, please let us know that this is your first time because we want to acknowledge it. We want to love on you and tell you how much we appreciate you showing up. To all of my Spirit of Fire Nation, we thank you so much. To all of our partners, partners, supporters, and, and friends worldwide, locally and globally, we thank God for you. Listen, we cannot do what we do without you. On behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say thank you for your continued support, your continued love, and your prayers. And for all of our first-timers today, we just want to acknowledge you. There are many platforms that you could be watching today, but God has you watching us, and you've decided to come into fellowship with us. So we do thank you, and we appreciate you so much showing up today. We don't, like I said before, I don't believe it's by chance that you're here. But I do believe that there is a word that God is going to share that's going to be a blessing to your life. And so I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we just love you guys. We here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where our motto is changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. We just believe that God has called us to go teach his people who they are and their authority and rights and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, for them to go and to demonstrate to the world the fullness of the sons and daughters of God. As you are trained in your identity as to who you are in Christ, you'll begin to believe it. As you believe it, you'll begin to act out on it. And people all around you will begin to see the fullness of who God created you to be. And so during this time, we've been having our series entitled Extreme Faith. This was something that's been on my heart for a while that God is really calling his people to begin to believe bigger, to believe uh, greater, to have radical faith. I mean, life transforming faith where your life goes from one place to the next. I mean, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And so now is the time, now is the season to step out on faith and to trust God and believe God like never before. Many of you have had many desires and dreams and visions and goals and objectives, some that have been lying dormant. But God is saying, I'm calling that stuff out of you. I want it to come into fruition because Jesus is coming back. Whether people believe it or not, he's coming back for his church. He's coming back for a bride without wrinkle, any blemish or spot or any such thing. And so what God is doing now is he's getting the wrinkles out of us. He's getting things in our lives that we're getting thing, things in our lives, getting them straight. Stuff that we've needed to correct, stuff that we've needed to accomplish and overcome and to achieve. And so it's my job to stir your faith up today and to get you to a place and to push you into your destiny, to push you into your purpose. And so that's one of the things I'm called by God to do, to help you now, to be that person, kind of like that midwife, to push you out, to push that baby out of you. All of that greatness in you, all of that purpose that's in you, it's time to manifest it to its fullness. And so right now, every person under the sound of my voice, I'm ready to get into this thing. Because I believe God wants to share something with you today. I believe that there's going to be a word that's going to be released to you today. That's going to motivate you. That's going to transform. That's going to change. That's going to catapult you into this purpose and destiny that we're always talking about. That you're always hearing about. That God has a pre prearranged path for your life. And in that path is the good life. I do believe this. That even from a prophetic standpoint, that a prophetic word, a word spoken by the inspiration of the Spirit of God to you can transform and change your life. I believe that. I believe that when words are spoken, it can create an atmosphere that's conducive for miracles, signs and wonders to take place. That'll be conducive for ideas, witty inventions and concepts. That's conducive for healing and transformation to take place. And that the power of God is going to be manifested. And so I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. Will you believe him with me that we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living for your life? God wants to transform your life in every area. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. and Let's jump into today's message. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords. Think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word. We do approach this holy written word reverently, and we thank you for it. We do acknowledge that it is God-breathed. It, it was breathed out of your mouth, Father, for us to live by. 
We thank you that you breathe upon men of old to write down the scriptures for our admonishment, for our development, for our growth. And so we thank you for it. We also covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as needed to minister to the needs of the people. So, Father, I thank you that you crown me with wisdom, great wisdom, to know how to articulate the mysteries of God, know how to manifest these things, the gifts of the Spirit, to know how to minister as a skilled surgeon in the lives of people, as a person to give encouragement, to give strength, to bring healing and to bring wholeness. And so we just thank you. We submit unto you this day. And so we just give you praise. I thank you that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to set at liberty them that are bruised, to heal the brokenhearted, to cause recovery of sight to the blind, to cause the, and to begin to proclaim and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of your divine favor. And so we thank you for it now. We give you praise. Father, I also pray for your favor, that your favor that begins to transform and change things, that policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions, are being changed and reversed on our behalf. That we win battles we don't even have to fight because you're fighting them for us. We thank you for an increase of assets, especially in real estate and an expansion of territory. We thank you right now. We thank you for it in advance, in Jesus' name. We thank you for healings that are taking place now. Divine healing in the people's bodies, in their minds, where people that are even from a mental standpoint, things that, are, that have harassed them for years. We command that thing to be loosed off of them now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. We rebuke every demonic force that tries to attack the people of God. We come against it now in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we give you praise. Yeah, yeah, it's the foolishness of preaching that, that will cause men to be delivered and set free. See, some people think, Father, we thank you. They think that, yeah, the word can't deliver and set free. But you know, all things are possible to him that believe. And so we are believers and not doubters. And so we trust you with all our heart. And we lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge you. And you say that you shall direct our path. So I thank you for divine direction today also. For people that are asking you things, questions, things that they've been praying about, that they will begin to see manifestation of your goodness in their lives right now in the name of Jesus. That things that they have struggled with, questions and, and, and things that they've been calling out to you about and praying about, I thank you that you settle it today. So we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, y'all, we've been talking about extreme faith, and, um, and it's, it's time for us to get ready to wrap this up. But in, in doing so, I want to do a quick recap. I, I want to get just keep this before you, that when God says something, when he spoke to me about extreme faith, this word extreme means to exist at a very high degree. <clears throat> it means to exceed the ordinary. It means to be radical. It means now to do something unusual or that's not expected. And so that means God is, I mean, God is going to do something in you and through you that you haven't even experienced before. That you have to release your faith for things that, I mean, that just gets you out of your comfort zone. So now God is saying, I want to radically change some things in your life, but I, I need your involvement. I need you to believe me. I need you to trust me in this thing. And so with that, there were some key points and seven key points in developing this level of faith, this high level of faith. And so number one, we talked about the integrity of the word of God. And knowing that you got to first understand that God's word is actually what it says itself to be, that it's the living word of God. And so we got to trust this word. So we, you see, God is no better than his word, just like us as people. If, if, we, if our word is no good, we're no good. So you can't trust us. But now in the same way, God says, if I said it, you can take it to the bank. If I told you this, if my word says this, you can count it as done. But we have to get involved in believing God's word. And so God even said in his word that he elevates his word above his whole name. And so God has subjugated himself to his word. God is sovereign, but in his sovereignty, he subjugated, subjugated himself to his name so that he would have to keep it. And so now we got to believe that and we got to trust that when God says it 
It's a settled issue. And so whether it's the rhema word of God or a word that's spoken by the inspiration of the spirit of God or whether it's the written word of God, we have to now mix it with our faith. We got to believe and trust God that what he said is going to come to pass. So then number two, we had to understand our redemption in Christ, that we've been redeemed from the authority of Satan by the blood of Jesus. Satan has no power over you. The devil can't make you do it as a believer. See, the devil can't make you do anything that you don't want to do because you have authority over him. So that means you have ability to stop and to resist any temptation that comes your way to do something outside of the will and the word of God. You have that authority, but you got to believe that. And so once you understand that, that causes your faith level to rise to accomplish whatever it is that you want to do. Number three, the reality of the new creation, that you are a new creature in Christ, that old things are passed away and behold, all things are made new. Sometimes some people's faith doesn't work because they don't even believe that they've changed. And so they don't have confidence in themselves. It's not so much not having confidence in God, but you don't trust you. And so what God is saying is you got to realize that you are a new creation. You are a new species of being all together. Your spirit man was made brand new when you got born again. And you got to believe that and you have to trust that, that God put his nature in you. Even though you once were separated from God, but now you've been made nigh, been brought near to God by the blood of Jesus, where you've received the spirit of adoption, where you've been, where you can cry, Abba, Father. You've been now born into the kingdom of God, born into the family of God. You one of God's children. You are part of the body of Christ. You're an heir of God and join heirs with Jesus. So all equal rights and privileges belong to us as believers. You have to believe that, that God loves you with the same love that he loves Jesus with. And you have to be confident in that love. See, because watch this, faith works by love. If you're not confident in God's love for you, your faith won't work at a high level because you don't believe you even deserve certain things. And it's not based on your merit anyway. It's based on what Jesus has done. Listen, we cannot reiterate this enough. You don't get things because you deserve them. You get it because Jesus died and ratified this new covenant so that you can have access to everything God has. See, it's a free gift of righteousness. You have to believe that you're the righteousness of God. You have to believe that, wait a minute, I'm blood washed, I'm blood bought. Jesus died, washed all my sins away. The penalty of those sins have, has already been met. The judgment has already been put on Jesus on that cross. And so now I can walk free knowing whom the son has set free is free indeed. So you need to begin to declare that I'm free. You need to begin to declare that you're free. Declare that you're free. Declare that you're free from every bondage. Declare that you're free from that thing that's been harassing you and hounding you from the mistakes of the past. Declare that you're the righteousness of God. Declare that all is well with you. Declare that God ain't mad at you. Declare that God loves you. You need to declare that. Then we realized that we talked about this on Thursday night, our relationship or our fellowship with the father. The very heart of reason for redemption is fellowship. God, he created us to give him glory. He wanted to have fellowship with his creation, with his children. And so God wants us to spend time with him. Your time spent with God will cause your faith to grow in him because your confidence in him grows the more you fellowship with him through his word, through prayer, through study of the word, reading of the word, understanding the word. You understand who God is. You understand his character. You understand his nature. The Bible says that the children of Israel knew God's acts, but Moses knew his ways. So Moses had more intimate fellowship with God than the people he was leading. But now under this new covenant, we don't have, the only mediator we have is Jesus Christ. We don't have any man on this earth has to now be our mediator to get to God. We have direct access to the father ourselves. Listen, you ain't got to go through your pastor. You ain't got to go through another minister. You ain't got to go through your mama, your daddy, your siblings, whatever. The person you most respect. Listen, you have direct access to God and you have direct access to go to the throne of God boldly. The Bible declares. 
And so you got to realize, wait a minute, I'm your child. I have a right to come to you. I have access to you. I have access to everything that you have because I'm your child. And so, Father, I'm going to grow in this thing. I'm going to grow in the confidence and knowing that every need that I have is met by faith because everything that pertains to life and godliness has already been created for me. This is my covenant right. So we talk about this fellowship. And you got to spend time with God. Now I'm going to start at number five today. I've been kind of waiting to get here. Number five, the reality. You got to understand this. In order for your faith to grow, you have to understand the reality of the authority of the name of Jesus. You got to understand. You got to understand this name that's above every name the Bible declares. We've he heard these things. We've heard religious cliches. We've heard things that people have said, but some people didn't believe it to the degree that they needed to. This is a name. God has given Jesus a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you got to realize with this name, the authority, the power, the rights and the privileges, the graces, the anointings, the things that can manifest when you understand how to wield that name. What I mean, how to work that name, how to declare that name, how to speak that name and know that when you speak things in the name of Jesus, is just like Jesus and heaven backing up you in every endeavor that you have. You got to believe that. Now watch this in the book of John 14. Let's go ahead and go there. Let's go to the scripture. In the, uh, I'm going to read out the Amplified Version. John chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. And it says here, he says, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as presenting, watch this, all that I am so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in through the Son. Yes, I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name as presenting all that I am. As presenting. Now watch this. At this moment and at this time, Jesus is telling, watch this, his disciples, that whatever you ask in my name, I myself will grant it. Because when you come in my name, it's presenting all that I am. You got to recognize that whenever you speak the name of Jesus, it presents all that he is. You, now, you got to meditate on this. You got to understand this. Realize who Jesus is, the authority, the power that he walks in. So when I speak Jesus, see, you, you got to get this. See, if you were with Jesus in the flesh, some of you would, would have a level of confidence because he's there with you. You see him physically there. And so what you would do if any trouble came, you would look at him as presenting all that he is to protect you, to keep you, to provide for you. Listen, I remember when I was younger and um, I had this bully that came and tried to mess with me in elementary school. And I told my big brother. And so now he went and took care of the bully for me. Now, watch this. I was so confident. Now a boldness came on me. Why? Because I had backup because I, my brother stepped up to now fight a battle for me that I couldn't fight at that moment in and of myself. And so our big brother, Jesus, when we present his name, everything that he has, all of his power, all of his wisdom, all of his authority is at our disposal, at our disposal. So when we speak the name of Jesus, everything, Jesus said it like this. He, when he was on the cross, he told the people, he says, don't you know, that I can call 12 legions of angels to come down and deliver me from this thing. But he willingly submitted himself on that cross and knowing that, wait a minute, I got this type of backup. Now see back in the day when, when whenever you got in trouble, sometimes it, listen, your backup was just a phone call away that you knew that, wait a minute, your boys, your girls were ready to be there for you. If anything went down, that you can call on your people and they were there for you. And I'm telling you, that, and there's a boldness that comes with that, knowing that if anybody messes with me, you're not just messing with me, you messing with everybody connected with me. And so you got to realize, Jesus said, don't you know who I represent? Don't you realize I'm the son of God? I can call 12 legions of angels. That's 12 times 6,000, a legion of 6,000. So 12 times that, I'm telling you, Listen, 72,000, are you kidding me? This many angels? 
backing me up. And that ain't even that's not even a, a smidgen of all of heaven's resources and power. He says, I can do this and wipe all of this out. But he says, watch this. I'm choosing to do this. This is the one. Watch this. Representing all that I am. The son of God seated at the right hand of the father, representing all that I am. We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So whatever he has, we have. So when we speak his name, he's given us authority. He's given us power of attorney to use his name. So whatever we need, when we say in the name of Jesus, that means everything attached to him is at our disposal. Everything that's near, to he, near and dear to him, all of heaven stands at attention. Angels are ready now to now fight for that name, to manifest for that name. I'm telling you, when you understand the power of this, see, I'm getting more revelation as I'm talking. It. And some, watch this. The more I'm speaking, it is welling up in me. The authority, the strength, the boldness to step out. So I don't care what comes my way. I don't care if, the, if Satan himself manifest. I have authority over that joker to now speak to him in the name of Jesus to shut down any attack that he has against my life. Same thing for you. You have authority. I like this. He says, whatever he says, I myself would do. it." So now we see here that God has given us the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus to meet our every need, whether it's spiritual, physical or financial. He has given us power over satanic forces. He has given us power over satanic forces. He has given us power. He has given us authority over all the power of the enemy, the ability of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt us or harm us. He has given us. God has given us. He has given you. He has given me. If you're a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now in this family. You have a right to use the name of Jesus with confidence and with boldness. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You got to listen. You got to start practicing this stuff, man. You got to believe it. See, this has to be taught. But now so that faith can come. But now faith without works is dead, being left alone. You need to speak to your body in the name of Jesus. Speak to your mind in the name of Jesus. Speak to your bank account in the name of Jesus. Speak to the situation in the name of Jesus. I don't care. I rebuke every demonic force, every wicked and perverted spirit that will try to infiltrate. I speak it over my children. I speak it over my family. I say any perverted spirit that will try to gain access, I shut it down and cut it off from the past in the name of Jesus. You will not enter into their lives. You will not influence them. I declare it and decree it in Jesus' name. I don't care if Satan is trying to lure them some way. God is going to show up. Something is going to happen to snap them back into their right mind. To know if God himself got to manifest. If an angel from heaven got to manifest. If the Holy Spirit got to come strong upon us to get this thing done. Whatever needs to be done is going to be done in Jesus' name. That's how I can walk in that authority. Because listen, it ain't Mike. I'm not doing this in my ability. I'm doing this in his ability. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And greater is he that's in you. Amen. Your, listen, listen, listen. Listen, Linda. Listen. listen, your presence is about to demand an explanation. Whenever you go somewhere, people are going to see stuff on. They're going to see something on you. They're going to see grace on you. They're going to see power on you. That when you speak like Peter, listen, I'm telling you like Peter, your shadow going to heal folk. Um, you better get ready for this. God is nurturing you in this thing. He's growing us up in this thing so that we can go into areas and begin to transform them into the Garden of Eden, to transform them into places that they should have always been, to, tra to transform. I'm telling you, you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that now, because you've been transformed, you go into areas and begin to transform them. All right, come on, come on, come on. Man, shoot. Now watch this. Mm-mm-mm. Now, I want to make this statement um, before I go to this next scripture. We have authority. Once again, I'm going to keep re reiterating this. 
we have the authority to use his name. The fact that many do not is not a matter of a lack of faith, but a matter of not knowing our legal rights in Christ. Sometimes you don't, ha it's not the fact that you don't have faith that you can declare it. Sometimes you just don't know what you can declare. So you have to know what your rights are. So you got to know that you have a right to all to be healed because Jesus already provided healing for you. See, if you didn't know that, 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 that Jesus already died for your healing, that he was beat, beaten, brood, bruised, and tattered and torn to take on not only your sin, but every part of the curse, which is spiritual death, which is sickness and disease and poverty, that now all of a sudden you'll accept things in your life thinking it's the will of God when actually it isn't. I remember hearing this, um, it was a famous person and their, their child was in the hospital and the child had this sickness that attacked their body. And one of the things this guy told his son, he said, um, well, let's listen to the stat. Look, you know what? God did this. So let's just begin to, you know, uh, make the most of it. Let's have some fun. Let's do whatever. And I'm like, that thing so hurt my heart. It's like now you sown that into your child because it was sown into you. You think that this is the will of God for your son to be sick? That God put this on them? God didn't do that. See, because of that, you won't resist what you think is God's will. You won't come against what you think he is for. You won't come against and say, wait a minute. If you think it's okay to be broke, you won't ever resist or add resistance to that. Well, it's a spiritual thing to be poor. It's a spirit. You know, it shows piety. It shows, it shows humbleness. We're supposed to be humble servants. That means just scratching and scraping along. That is the biggest bunch of crock I ever heard. That, that, I, there are people who preach that. And I mean, they think that they're doing God a service, that they are defenders of the faith. Because they telling people, listen, it, it ain't God's will for you to be rich. The Bible even says Jesus became poor so that through his poverty, you might be made rich. We might be made rich. Just that scripture in and of itself. The Bible even declares wealth and riches shall be in your house. Listen, he's giving you the power to get wealth, Deuteronomy 8, 18. So why would he give you power to get something that's against his will? Come on, y'all. To me, it's like it's common sense. Think. Think for yourselves. Read for yourselves. Reading is still fundamental. Study to show yourself approved unto God. So I don't care who comes. I don't care how famous they are. I don't care how well known they are. When I know the will of God, I confer no longer with flesh and blood. See, so you're talking to too many people, listening to too many voices. Now you're confused. Because this person said you can do it. This one said you can't do it. And now you're trying to figure out who to believe because you feel like both of them are credible voices. But listen, I'm giving you the word of God. I'm teaching you the word of God. That's my job as a minister of the gospel, to minister the mysteries of the gospel. And so now to stir your faith up so that now you can rise up and say, wait a minute, I don't belong here. Listen, I'm living beneath my privileges. I'm fed up with this. It's time to get to the point where you are, listen, it's almost like being sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's to the point of, wait a minute, I have lived beneath this too long. It's time to move forward and possess what's rightfully mine. Listen, be like the woman who was bound, the person bound 18 years and couldn't otherwise loose themselves. And Jesus just asked the question, will thou be made whole? He's asking the question, do you want to be whole? Because it's right here before you. And if you know how to tap into this and use the name of Jesus to begin to decree and to declare that all things are working together for my good, I declare it now in Jesus' name. See, let's see, watch this. Because now it's a matter of you taking your rightful place as a son or daughter and taking advantage of your rights as a child of God. See, it's a matter of knowing what belongs to us and doing what the word says. See, you got to declare and decree things and they're going to be established. Declare and decree in the name of Jesus. I declare this. In the name of Jesus, I decree this. OK, y'all got it. Oh, I wish I was with y'all. Whew. I like to see faces, too, to see if you're getting it. I'm just trusting the Holy Ghost that you're getting it, that you're getting it.
that you need to begin to declare and decree, not just haphazardly saying it to see if something happens. See, you, you can't pray like that. You got to pray with confidence and boldness, knowing that when I speak this in the name, see, this ain't just a song to shout about. This is something to live by. That name that's above every name. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over this. In the name of Jesus, I speak over my child. In the name of, man, I, I sense the authority of that thing rising up. In the name of Jesus, I command what's wrong in my body to correct itself now in Jesus' name. You line up now in Jesus' name. I take authority over sickness and disease. You are in violation. For you to even come and attack my body is a violation of the covenant that I have with God. Now you get out of here in Jesus' name. And body, you amend yourself now. Healing take place now. I receive it now. I cause it to come to pass now. Stop, listen, even as I'm praying, anything that's, that's even trying to go wrong in my body, it begins to correct itself. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that tries to touch my body dies instantly in Jesus' name. See, okay, okay, I'm, let me, now I ain't calming down no more. I got to preach this thing to folk. I'm telling you, listen, 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 listen. I went out recently, my son and I, we got our first um, vaccination shot, COVID vaccination shot. I was debating whether to do it or not for the longest time because really the only reason I did it was because I know there's going to be certain requirements for certain places and things I got to do and for other people. But my trust ain't in no shot. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just straight up. I have gotten so developed in the fact that I function in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made me free from the law of sin and death. And I've said so much that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches my body dies instantly. I am fully convinced Now you do what you want to do, but I am fully convinced that the minute if you were to put it in my hand, you would probably see it die instantly. See, see, okay. See, talk like that. It was this man by the name. I think it was John Lake, if I'm not mistaken. He was um, doing missionary work. I don't know if it was in Africa at that time, but this was the time where the bubonic, the, uh, bubonic plague had, had uh, broken out. And they, they were up in this village. And everybody um, was dying off in that village. And I think that the, um, the disease had gotten into the water supply system somewhere up there. But a medical team went up there. And when they saw everybody sick and people dying, but nothing happened to this man of God, to um, Brother Lake, Dr. Lake. And they tried to figure out, why haven't you been infected by this? And he made this statement, because I function in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made me free from the law of sin and death, out of Romans 8 and 1, in verse 2. He told them this. He says, if you were to put the disease, he says, this, this disease lives in people up to two days after they've died. If you take this out of them and put it in my hand, you will see it die instantly. Sure enough, they put his hand under a microscope, took a piece of that disease out of a, a body, a cadaver, and put it in his hand, and instantly it withered up and died. And it blew their minds. Because, wait a minute, science hadn't caught up with a cure. <laughs> Come on now. You, I hope you heard something. I said, science hasn't caught up. Science really only reveals in some cases what already is. Okay, okay, okay. See, you, you got to help. I, you got to work with me with this. Y'all got to work with me. Because sometimes you're so busy listening to people who are just practicing medicine versus the one who already told you what a source of your healing comes from and so now you're going to believe the doctor over God's word because really you don't have confidence in his word yet. So I'm not beating you up because maybe you don't have confidence, but now it's going to come to a point. Hey, are you going to believe God finally? Or are you going to keep believing a doctor that's going to keep you hooked? That's only limited by certain knowledge. I'm not against doctors. I listen, I love doctors. I believe they work with God, the right ones. Because there are some people, listen, if you study the medical industry, I'm not going to get too much into this, but 
listen, sometimes they don't want you to find certain cures. Because if you find even natural remedies to things that are already in the earth, then that means you're taking billions out of their hands and out of their pockets. So they, listen, they are getting rich off of people's sickness. So they want to keep you hooked on stuff. And it's time for you to come off of that stuff. Some of you have been on medications for years, and you coming off of it now in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I declare it. I declare it in Jesus' name. Now you declare it. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming off this thing. Now watch this. While you're declaring that, do the practical, natural things you need to do and watch how you begin to wean off and come on off. Uh, I wish I could say some things I'm not going to say right here on there because it, it ain't time just yet. But you're going to have to trust the Holy Spirit to begin to guide you too. See, once you get to a place of, see, that fellowship with the Father develops your ear for God to hear him. And when you have that ear to hear him, he will begin to, watch this, release wisdom to you to show you what to do. Because somebody who ain't hearing God can try to give you advice, and they mean well when they do it, but it's contradictory to what he wants done. So you will find yourself following false wisdom versus the wisdom that comes from heaven itself for your life because God knows what's going on in you. And just because that remedy helped for somebody else, your body makeup is different. And God will start telling you, put this combination together. Do this. Go talk to this person. Research this. Do these things. And then all of a sudden now healing and health takes place. Anyway, amen. Now, I didn't plan on staying here today this long, but this is good because I want to sow this into you. It's been a long time coming. I don't think I've ever done a series on the name of Jesus and just the power behind it. Now, watch this from chapter 14. Now we're going to go to chapter 16 in the book of John. And I want to share something a little different in how Jesus even said it. Now, in, in John 14, he says, I will do and myself will grant whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified and extolled through the Son. But now here he says something a little different. And when the time, that time came, I'm out of the Amplified, John 16, verses 23 through uh, 24, he says, and when that time comes, now let, let, let's, he says, now what is this time that he's speaking of? The time that he's speaking of here is the time where he leaves the earth to go to be with his Father in heaven to be seated at the right hand of God. He says, when that time comes, you will ask nothing of me. Watch this. You will need to ask me no questions. Because see, now he's gone. Up until that time, he was walking with them. He says, now you can come to me at that time, but when this time comes, when I leave, you don't come to me. Now, this, now I dealt with this one dealing with prayer. That There are a lot of people who pray to Jesus but then we're going to see here, that's not a biblical scriptural prayer. What? That's all I've been taught is to go to Jesus. He'll answer prayer when I call on Jesus. Yeah, we sing songs about it. We do all this stuff. But watch what Jesus himself says. Come on. Uh-huh. Ooh. This is, he says, when that time comes, you will ask nothing of me. This is Jesus talking. You will need to ask me no questions. He says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that my father will grant you whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. Here we go again. So whatever you ask the father, not asking me, whatever you ask the father in my name, he's going to grant it to you. He says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that my father will grant you whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. Watch this. Up to this time, you have not asked a single thing in my name as presenting all that I am. But now ask and keep on asking and you will receive so that your joy, gladness, delight may be full and complete. He has given us this recipe. Go to my father, but ask it in my name. 
When you ask it in my name, I'm giving you power of attorney to use my name to represent all that I am. So now I can go to my father to request things in the name of Jesus. And the Bible declares that he will grant it to me. He will grant it to you. That's the power of this name. That's the power of this name. Father, in the name. In the name. See, this is why we co-sign these prayers. In Jesus' name. Not in my name. Not in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So be it. It is so. This is a powerful thing. So now, watch this. When you go in prayer, your faith is stirred up because Jesus told you how to get your prayers answered. Go to the Father, which you've already gotten access to because you're born again. You already received the spirit of adoption, whereby you can cry, Abba, Father, God, your daddy. See, I'm telling you, y'all, y'all, you got to get this. You got to understand this. Understand your relationship with God, that he is your father. He is your father. He is your father. He is your father. See, some of you maybe don't have fathers that are living or don't have never had relationship with your father, with your earthly father. And sometimes the comprehension of that, of having an individual that you see as a father to take care of you, to supply needs, to be there, to provide protection, to provide support, to, to, to take care and make sure everything is okay. I'm telling you, when you have that reality of God being your father, not just him being God, he is God. And they that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. But you got to realize he is your father. And you can go to your father in the name of your Lord Jesus. And whatever you ask, it'll be granted to you. Some of y'all are like, well, I know this. I already know this. You, mm, you might have a mental assent to it. You know it mentally, but do you really believe it when you pray? Do you really believe that God is hearing you when you pray, that the name of Jesus gives you that access and the power behind that name? So if you're dealing with somebody who is now deemed, well, I'm, I'm going to get ready to get to that point. And just now, nah, <laughs> Before I, before I get to that point, you got to realize now that whatever you ask the Father in his name, Jesus' name, he's going to grant it. All right, now, now real quick, ah, I'm out of time, but I'm going to give you this last scriptural reference. Acts 19, Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 17. Now, I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. Now, it says this. Now, I'm going to show you the power of this name used in dealing with satanic forces, dealing with Satan himself, all of his demonic forces, dealing with sickness and disease, how to minister to the sick, all of these kinds of things. Now watch this. It says God gave Paul the power. Who gave Paul the power? God did. To perform unusual miracles. When, watch this, handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people. They were healed of their diseases, and evil spirits were expelled. Now watch this. A group of Jews was traveling from town to town casting out um, evil spirits. Now these were people who were professional exorcists, performing exorcisms. They tried to use the, watch this, they tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation saying, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. So they tried to cast the devil out of those individuals. But watch this. In the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. That, that statement in and of itself is showing no relationship connected to the God who empowered Paul to do these things. Remember, God gave Paul the power in the beginning to do this. So now they're trying, to, they're trying to duplicate what Paul is doing. But watch this. See, that, that oh, when you try to duplicate without the source, oh, it don't work out. See, this is why a person who does something when they're graced by God to do it versus a person trying to do it when they're not graced by God to do it, 
it comes out different. That's why you just can't repeat what everybody does because you may have a grace for something else and that person has a grace for that, what they're doing. So you can't always take everything that somebody else is doing and apply it to your life to get the same results. That's a whole nother message right there. That's a whole nother thing. Now, all right, now, now watch this. He says, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches to come out. Watch this, seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest were doing this. But one time when they, were, when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Mm. Satan knows you. When you are part of this body, the body of, the, of Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, when you walking in this fortune, he knows you. I had this happen to me one time when um, years ago I was working on this job and this guy who was there that I worked at this company with, he, he, was, he was a different dude. You, you could tell he was a little different. And one time we were talking, and I could tell something was off about him. But then he looked at me. He says, I know who you are. I says, I know you do. See, I was bold. I, I didn't care. Listen, there's one thing about me. I've been a bold cat all my life. So it's like, if you step to me, I'm coming. And I remember just speaking, and it was like, uh-huh, I got you. And he, he, he just shut down. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. See, when you rise up in your authority, Satan himself. See, as I talk about it, I sense it on me. It's like, I, it's like a coat. I, I feel it sometimes. Was just the power of God, the anointing that creates a level of boldness for you to attack the enemy and command that sucker to come out. Stop playing around with the devil. You don't counsel no devil. You cast it out. Some stuff you trying to counsel, no, you need to cast that thing out. Get, evict that thing out of your mind. Evict it out of your life. You have authority to do that. Now, let me say something here. If you're a born-again believer, if you're filled with the Spirit of God, you have God's nature. You receive Jesus. Your spirit man is born again and brand new. Satan cannot possess your spirit, but he can oppress your mind, your soul. He can get into your physical body and cause sicknesses and diseases. Evil spirits can cause sicknesses and diseases. And sometimes you got to pray for even wisdom to know which is which. Is this sickness caused by a spirit that's, that's tried to do something or an attack? All of it is still rooted out of the curse. But listen, all of it can be healed in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. All of it. 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 From the inside out, it's going to start manifesting. It's manifesting. From the inside out, every impurity I command it in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, lift up your hands right now. You receive this right now. In the name of Jesus, I command every impurity in your body to come out, to be uprooted and dissolved. I command high blood pressure to come down and be normalized. I command your pancreas to secrete the proper amount of insulin that promotes life and health. I command your heart valves to function properly. I rebuke plaque right now. I command your arteries to be clean, elastic, and dissolve any plaque that's built up that's in it. I rebuke heart attacks. I rebuke aneurysms. I declare that your body, that your mind functions, that every proton, neutron, and electron fires properly in your mind, that every, yeah, 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 every system in your body functions in the perfection to which God created it to function. I command your womb to open up now in Jesus' name. I command conception to take place. I command cataracts to be dissolved and removed in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree it now. I declare anything that's trying to obstruct, any obstructions in your body, I command them to be removed. I command kidney stones to be dissolved. Yeah, yeah, and pass on through. They come on out of your body now. Yeah, every cyst. Yeah, every cancerous tumor. I command it to die and to wither up and to leave your body now. In Jesus' name, glory to God. I command internal bleeding to stop now in Jesus' name. I command it to stop now in Jesus' name. And I command healing to take place in your body. I command your mind to be made sharp. 
ye robosh ete kama se te komba ye te kana yeah 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 i rebuke autism i rebuke system symptoms of autism i command your mind to function in the perfection of which god created it to function in jesus name i rebuke sickness and disease i rebuke you you foul spirit of infirmity i command you in jesus name to come off of their bodies to come out of their bodies to take your hands off their minds now in Jesus name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, that's what happens when that word gets in you and it begins to stir your faith up. You can't help but to act out on it. I've just felt led by the spirit of God. Faith has been built just over this time of preaching the word and preaching the word and preaching the word that faith is coming, that faith is being built up. There is no distance in the spirit. You better receive it now. You better receive what's just been spoken over you. You better receive it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Blood glucose levels normalizing now. High sugars. I command your levels to drop now to where they're supposed to be in Jesus name. Yep. From skin conditions, everything everything from the inside out i thank you boils are leaving people now 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 in jesus name lumps and tumors you have to dissolve uh-huh you have to dissolve and leave glory to god now who now watch this let's continue let me finish this scripture i'm gonna go ahead and shut it down after this Ooh, glory to god he says talking about the seven sons of skeev in verse 15 but one of them when they tried, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, and I know Mike too. He says, but who are you, glory to God? <laughs> he says, who are you? Now watch this. Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, them, one person. See, when a person is demonically possessed, there is supernatural strength that that individual can possess. Sometimes it takes multiple people to hold them down from a physical standpoint, but all it takes is one under the authority and the power of the name of Jesus to shut down that demonic force in Jesus name. Man, I'm telling you, you better go ahead and get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. You got power. Who? He says he overpowered them and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The dude ripped the clothes off of them and beat them up. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored because this one man functioned in the authority of the name of Jesus and the power that God had given him that people who tried to do it another way, tried to imitate, couldn't do it. Got their tail whipped and the, watch this, See, the word of it, the news of it spread. And the fame of the Lord Jesus was magnified. His name was honored. Things began, see, that, that's what's going to get ready to happen. See, you're going to manifest who you are. That's part of the main, that's our vision. Teaching you this stuff to manifest who you are. And the fame shall rise. Not fame for you, but fame for him to give him glory, you as his mouthpiece, we as his mouthpiece, his hand and his feet. Jesus is the head, but we're the body. We got to get this work done, folks. And he wants us to know who we are, to function in who we are as representatives, representing him and all that he is in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory for this time. We thank you for your word. We receive it. We receive healing. We receive freedom, deliverances. We receive wholeness, nothing missing, broken or lacking. Yeah, we receive debt cancellations also in Jesus' name. Yeah, debt cancellations, forgiveness of debts, the money coming in to pay off debts that you've owed, all of these things. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. I pray that each and every person, even under the sound of my voice, for those that have not received the Lord Jesus, that you will let them know that there is literal, a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And so we just pray for them now in Jesus' name, that their hearts are open to receive the ministry of your word. Glory to God. Now,
For those that may be listening, you never received Jesus as your Savior. I want you to repeat these words after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, <laughs> I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord and I make you, I make you the Lord of my life. Now I want you to say this. I said, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm delivered now. I'm set free now in Jesus name. Now watch this. Say now, Father, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come into my life now. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. I receive you in your fullness. Consume me. Wash me. Cleanse me. I receive you as my helper. I receive you as my teacher. I receive you as my counselor, my guide, ready to give me peace. In Jesus' name, glory to God, amen. Listen, if that's you, you made Jesus the Lord of your life. You received the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that we're here for you, to help you, to teach you, to develop you. These, listen, we have our discipleship training where we take you through the word and we tell you how to pray, understanding what salvation is, what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, how to pray. You know, what God says about just even the foundational truths of the word of God to help you build a solid foundation. If that's you and you need help with that, you want to build and you want to grow in that, let us know. Connect with us. Send us a message. Tell us, hey, I want to connect with you guys. I want to learn how to grow in my faith. We're here for you. We love you. We appreciate you. So at this time, if that's you, you receive Jesus as your Lord, as your Lord and Savior, you got filled with the Holy Ghost, let us know. Shoot us a DM. Message us. Let us know, hey, I've gotten saved. I've gotten born again. Now I want to grow. <clears throat> now, lastly, if you need a church home, I recommend this one. Right now we, we're virtual, but we will be coming together for in-person service. We will announce that when the time is, um, comes, when we do that. But right now we just want to love on you. So even where you are, no matter what state you're in, no matter what country you're in, we want to love on you. And so now we want you to go ahead and send us a message. Let us know, hey, I want to connect. I don't have a church home. Every person needs a pastor. You need a place of submission where you can grow in the word, develop in the word. Let us do that for you. We promise to pray over you on a daily basis. We promise to teach you the word of God to help you to grow and to develop so that you can apply it to your everyday life in a practical and an effective manner so that you can change your own world. And then as a result, help to change others so that now God can grow you up, discovering your destiny, your purpose in Christ and moving forward in life. If that's you. We want you to connect with us. Praise God. Also, while you're doing that, we want to honor God in our giving at this time. Our worship, we want to complete our worship with our giving. One thing, as we honor God and we come together, that as we come before his presence, we're singing, enter into his courts with praise. Even the scripture talks about bringing an offering. That was one of the things typically as men and women came to honor the Lord and to worship God, they will come with their substance. They never came empty handed. They always came to sow because your, your money represents your livelihood. It represents your sweat, your tears, your labor. And so God doesn't take it lightly. It's not so much God wants your money, but he wants your heart. It's our hearts towards God, giving out of gratitude, out of love. And so I encourage you, sow a seed today. Sow a seed in faith, saying, you know what? This is my breakthrough seed. This is my seed, my extreme faith. Whatever it is you're believing for, let us know so we can be in agreement with you. Believing for a new home, believing for a new vehicle, new job, 
new opportunities, new doors, whatever it is, we want to pray with you. Our intercessors will pray for you. Listen, we pray every day. Our intercessory team prays every day. We pray with our partners and supporters. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. So at this time, there's information that's coming up on your screen as to different methods in which you can give, whether it's um, text to give, whether it's on, online giving. I believe it's also, we have a new method, a QR code where you can just take a picture on your phone, scan it, and it'll take you to the giving page if you want to sow that way. And so we just want to honor God in our giving. So we want to give you that opportunity. Also, as your minister, listen, this is still worship, y'all. So even as you're giving, don't just get in the habit of, we used to call it back in the day, bucket plucking. You know, when people pass the bucket, you just put the money in and that's it. Or you just had the little marching lines and put money in the trays. This is worship. We're worshiping God with our resources. See, one of the things I haven't taught it in a long time, but even talking about when you're tithing, tithing the tithe. In other words, presenting it to God with word. Father, I honor you with this tenth. I honor you with this substance. I honor you with this seed. And I thank you so much for blessing me with the ability to even make this money and to generate this income. So I want to honor you with it. And I thank you that your word promises, you promise in your word, that as I honored you with this, that you will multiply this seed sown. So Father, we just thank you that you will increase my resources for giving, but also give me bread to eat. So you will make sure that I'm taking care of me and my family, but also that I have more than enough to, to continue to sow and to continue this process. So as you give, honor God in your giving. Yeah. Now I want you to repeat this after me as you're sowing. Say, because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, there is meat in my house. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, he opens up the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing upon me that there is not room enough for me to receive it. Say, because I tithe and give offerings, God rebukes the devourer for my sake. Say, I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Say, I'm not in poverty. I'm in prosperity. Say, I'm not in lack. And watch this, I'm in abundance. And my abundance is a supply to those that are in lack. Say I'm out of debt, my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. Say wealth and riches are in my house and money cometh to me. Now, 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. See, that's what you do. Speak over that seed. Command it to grow. To man, command it to come back extra. Glory to God. I like that. Extra. Well, praise God as you're doing that. Today is first Sunday. And this is time where we actually have communion. <clears throat> so I want to give you a quick opportunity to go to grab maybe a piece of bread, a cracker, whatever, and some juice or something that represents the body and blood of the Lord. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that, maybe if you haven't. And so we're going to honor God. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. So I'm just giving you a quick opportunity because now watch this. Jesus said in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 32, it talks about um, him instituting uh, this ordinance called communion. And it was like, Jesus said this, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. He says, often as you drink it, I want you to drink it in remembrance of me. He says, this bread, it's, it's, it represents my body that was broken. See, because my body was broken, your sickness became mine. My healing became yours. There was an exchange. Just like when my blood was shed, my righteousness for your sin. And so now we've been made the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus. We've been healed, set free, and delivered by his body that was torn and bruised and battered for us. So when we partake of communion, we are acknowledging what Jesus has done. 
He says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. He says, don't do it in an unworthily manner, not discerning the Lord's body, not seeing what this represents, not recognizing that, wait a minute, Jesus died for me to live. Jesus now took on my sins so that I could be made righteous and I won't have to now succumb to the penalty, the judgment of the penalty of the sin because Jesus took on my judgment. Now I don't have to, this sickness can't remain in my body and I have a right to reject it and to resist it because Jesus died so I can be healed. And so I declare, when I partake of these elements, I receive what they represent in all of its fullness. So when I partake of this, I'm expecting, if you've been dealing with sickness and disease, receive your healing now. Watch this. If you've been struggling with guilt and condemnation, receive your peace and your forgiveness. You are forgiven. So forgive yourself. And the stain of the past, I command it to be removed in Jesus' name. Jesus said, this is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you eat it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the new covenant, new testament in my blood. I want you to do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Say this, say, I believe I receive the fullness of my inheritance now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, love you guys so much. Appreciate you. Out of time, certainly not out of message. We want to let you know, listen, the best is still yet to come. We want you to keep your expectation high. We want you to now meditate on this word, apply it to your life, see the results. Let us know. Give testimony. You got to begin to testify when God starts doing stuff in your life. When you start seeing fruitfulness manifestation, we want to hear from you. When things begin to happen well, when you're applying this word and you're seeing it manifest in your life, we want to know about it. Okay? We love you guys so much. Now I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that all is well with you. I declare favor, freedom, financial success, peace of mind, wholeness in your heart and your body in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Love you. See you next time. Peace.